Turbine students, here we come up with the knee joint, arterial supply, nerve supply, and applied anatomy of the knee joint. So therefore, the arterial supply of the knee joint, there will be list of arteries. The first artery will be the genicular branch of popliteal artery. So please note down, genicular branch of popliteal artery. This is the first arterial supply. Second branch will be descending genicular branch of femoral artery. So descending genicular branch of femoral artery. The third will be the descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. So the third will be descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. These are the three <coughs> arterial supply of the knee joint. Once again I repeat, genicular branch of popliteal artery, then the descending genicular branch of femoral artery, then the descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery. In addition to these three arteries, there will be two more reinforcements, two more arterial reinforcements. The first reinforcement will be that of the branch of anterior tibial artery. So therefore, that will be known as the recurrent genicular branch of anterior tibial artery. And the second will be that of the circumflex fibular, which is a branch of posterior tibial artery. Circumflex fibular branch of posterior tibial artery. So these are the two reinforcements. Number one, the <coughs> recurrent genicular branch of anterior tibial artery. Number two, the circumflex fibular branch of posterior tibial artery. So altogether, the five arteries will supply the knee joint. Please note down this five arteries supplying the knee joint. Now we come to nerve supply. Very interesting. The arteries and nerve supply, they are asked as one mark question answer or in various MCQs. They are very important. So nerve supply, total <coughs> there will be 10 nerves which supply the knee joint. So total there will be 10 nerves which supply the knee joint. Three nerves will be from branches of femoral nerve. So what are those three branches from femoral nerve? They are the three nerves going to the vasti. The three nerves going to the vasti group of muscles, they are branches of femoral nerve. So three from branches of femoral nerve in the form of branches to the vasti group of muscles. Three branches. Another three branches will be from tibial nerve. And what are the name of these three branches? They are the superior medial genicular, inferior medial genicular and there will be middle genicular nerve and the middle genicular nerve. These three are branches of tibial artery, sorry tibial nerve. Then we come across to three more branches of the common peroneal nerve. And these three branches of common peroneal nerve will be superior lateral genicular, inferior lateral genicular and recurrent genicular which will be a branch of common peroneal nerve. So therefore, three from tibial, superior medial genicular, inferior medial genicular and the middle genicular. Three from common peroneal, superior lateral genicular, inferior lateral genicular and recurrent genicular. So altogether, three, 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 nine plus one that will make ten. So the last branch will be genicular branch of the posterior division of obturator nerve. So last one is genicular branch of posterior division of obturator nerve. Please note down this very important. Because the branch of anterior division of obturator nerve supplies hip joint. And this is the branch of posterior division of obturator nerve which supplies knee joint. Very frequently asked one mark question answer. So here we complete the 10 nerve supply of the knee joint. Then the last segment, we come across to applied anatomy. In the applied anatomy, the points, the first point, <coughs> three most common structures that are injured in the knee joint. And those three structures will constitute a triad. What are those three structures? So therefore, anterior cruciate ligament. One. Two, there will be medial meniscus. 
3, there will be tibial collateral ligament. These three structures will constitute the deadly triad, which will often, more commonly get ruptured or injured during traumatic injuries of the knee joint. So please note down these three structures. Now, in case of anterior cruciate ligament, any blow which occurs to the anterior compartment of the knee from the front, if the knee joint receives any blow from the front, there will be ACL tear, there will be tear in anterior cruciate ligament. So what will happen? <coughs> the patients will have anterior displacement of the tibial condyles. There will be anterior displacement of the tibial condyles just below the femur. This is about anterior cruciate ligament tear. Now we come to medial meniscus and tibial collateral ligament. Whenever any person receives a blow on the lateral side of the knee, remember whenever a blow is received on the lateral side of the knee, when the knee is firmly planted on the ground, there may be sprain of tibial collateral ligament and along with the sprain of tibial collateral ligament there may be damage to or rupture to the medial meniscus. This is very important point. Please note down this point. So therefore, in such patients, what will happen will be, there will be extreme amount of pain during medial rotation of the knee joint. Pain will be felt during the medial rotation of the knee joint. And in case of flexed position of the knee joint, whenever there is flexed position of the knee joint, whenever the knee joint is flexed, forcible abduction or forcible rotation of the knee joint will immediately produce damage to menisci. So menisci tear, either it is medial or lateral menisci, will most commonly occur in those conditions when the knee joint is flexed and when the knee joint in flex condition is forcibly abducted or rotated. Then the next point will be, in case of menisci tear, the most commonly injured menisci out of medial and lateral meniscus will be medial meniscus. So this medial meniscus is the most commonly injured meniscus. And in this medial meniscus tear, the most common tear is peripheral part of medial meniscus may be ruptured, it may be disconnected. And this peripheral tear of the medial meniscus will be known as bucket handle tear. And in that bucket handle tear, so you need to mention this, it is known as bucket handle tear in the peripheral detachment of the medial meniscus. Sometimes in bucket handle tear, the portion of the menisci which is teared will be sucked up within the knee joint and as a result of which there will be painful movements of the knee joint. In those cases, surgical removal of the medial meniscus is encouraged. And whenever surgical removal of medial meniscus is encouraged, this, since it is a fibrocartilage, there are chances of regrowth of this meniscus. And finally, in the last of the applied anatomy, we come across the last point that is fracture of patella. Since this is the applied anatomy of the knee joint, the fracture of the patella. Now in fracture of patella, usually it is traumatic injury to the knee joint. A severe traumatic injury to the anterior side or front of the knee joint will involve patella and usually this fracture will pass in a horizontal line which will almost divide the patella into two parts, upper and lower. So therefore, this patellar fracture will hinder the movements of knee joint. It will cause obstruction in the movements of knee joint. It will cause pain in the movements of knee joint. During extreme cases of trauma in which there is fracture of patella. So with this we end the applied anatomy of the knee joint and the entire knee joint. Thank you very much.